Welcome today. How are you doing? This is um, our 24th video on communion, and it's just been an honor for me to be able to bring these to you during this quarantine time. It is a blessing for me. Now, if you are not watching this live, you can go to minute 10 to catch our Bible study. Good morning, Cindy and Tracy. I'm excited to see you. I hope you're having a good day. It's a wonderful moment to contemplate the Lord. Hi, Rodell. Cindy, thank you. L.A., good morning. How are you? Good to see you. Deborah, how are you? Hello. Oh, I was going to show you what we were, what we picked out of our yard last night. The most beautiful, Aramaic smelling bouquet. It just gives you hope, doesn't it? Just gives you life. To see that the world is going on. Things are still happening. Not everything has stopped. Is that right? Not everything is quit. Good morning, Selena. How are you doing? Deborah, how are you? Good morning. It's a good day, isn't it? Aren't they beautiful? I've missed you guys. I was just going to read to you a little bit out of my Holy and Holy book. Good morning. Hey, Colleen. Are these, are these jasmine or honeysuckle? We just picked them out of the yard. I can't remember. They smell so strong. You have yellow roses, good, good. Colleen's an agriculturist, so I figured she'd, she'd know what they are. You think they're honeysuckle? That's what I was thinking, but Rodell says they're jasmine. They sure do smell good. We're going to have a contest to see what my flowers are. They do. They look similar, and I can't remember, but we've had these. We have a huge, huge bush out in front. <laughs> Cindy's insisting it's honeysuckle. Well, they sure smell good anyway. Tracy says it's Jasmine. Colleen, you know what that is. Tell us what that is. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Hi, Sean. The Holy Spirit lives in you to show you the truth and to cause you to see into new and eternal realms. While Jesus walked the world, the crowds easily saw him as a man. But only those with spiritual eyes could perceive him as the Christ. Honeysuckle. Ah. So now Rodell went out to the yard and said that this is honeysuckle. He says, this is the honeysuckle. He just came in with another kind of plant. And then he says that this is jasmine. We can't even see with our eyes. With our natural eyes, let alone. So this, Rodell says it's jasmine, and Colleen says it's jasmine. So we'll go with we'll go with jasmine. <laughs> Hi, Christine. I'm glad you could come and be with us today, Andrea. Welcome, welcome. 
So we've been having a debate on seeing what kind of flowers I have here. Seeing with spiritual eyes can be one of the most crucial discoveries you'll ever make. Focusing on seeing the right rays of sunlight converging onto your goals. Jesus said, blessed are your eyes for they see. We all see something different, don't we? We see what we think we understand. So if you would, just uh, take this time and just type in the name of some of your friends that you think might enjoy this. Now, yesterday, I noticed that several of the names that you typed in here watched the video later. So it does help us um, pass this word along, and it does help us grow. So thank you, Cindy, for putting in some names. If we just put the names in, and it, you know, sometimes Facebook wants you to put an at sign ahead of time, but uh, ahead of the name, so it will link. But usually if you just type their name, it will link into Facebook, to their Facebook, and tell them that they have a message. Hebrews 11 says, Now, today, right this minute, faith is the substance, the title guarantee of things not seen in the natural realm. Faith is the evidence, the proof, that gives reality to the unseen, treating them like they were already objects of sight rather than hope. So faith takes us from, from things that are not seen into seeing them. Apostle Lynetta, good morning. I'm so glad to see you today. <clears throat> Without vision, we will perish. So we were trying to decide what these flowers were. That's, that's a natural, that's, a, that's a, something that is seen. We see this and we know we recognize it, but it's kind of hard to remember what it is. But that's a natural sight. It doesn't take faith to see that. But it takes faith for us to see promises beyond our today. It takes faith to, in us to believe what the Lord has been saying to us all along. I love you too, Apostle Lynetta. My God, what a what a honor to have you as a friend. Without vision, we perish. Without spiritual insight, we perish. Our confessions will be in vain if they don't pertain to what God shows us. Now, now just hear this and we'll be finished. The problem has been that all along we've said the right words, but not the right words that result from perceiving in a spiritual realm. No longer can we confess from a standpoint of what we want, which might be good, but not revelatory. We must speak from his now purposes. No longer can we, can we just pray for what we want. No longer can we believe for just what we need, but we have to see past, past our wants and past our needs into the place, into the place where we see God's intention, even for this um, time that we're having here in quarantine. We're learning so much about how to how to move the church outside of the walls, aren't we? We're learning how to have a church beyond uh, confinement. We're, we're breaking out of old standards, and we're learning to see past what we've ever seen before. So we're typing in some names of friends that we think might want to join us here as we're, as we're moving forward. It's just important for us to, 
to understand that what we think we see is not always the reality. And if, if you're feeling depressed and disappointed, maybe you're not seeing past where we're supposed to be today. What are we supposed to be seeing in this time? What are we supposed to be um, accomplishing? What are we supposed to see past the natural in this? Because we see that we're um, confined. We see that we're bored. But do we see that we're reaching people on a, on a greater level than we've ever reached them before? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to move these flowers away from me just a little bit because I think maybe they're making me cough. <laughs> they have such a strong, strong aroma. It's a, it's 11, 11 and it's time for us to begin. And I'm so, so excited that we can be together today. And I'm Dr. Kwani, and I, I want to talk to you today a, a, a more about crossing over. Debbie, thank God for you. Joe, I'm glad to see you, L.A. It's wonderful to have you guys with me. So we've been talking about how, how we learn to cross over. And crossing over means to impregnate, to take, to breathe upon. God's chosen covenant people were the ones that crossed over. Like Abraham was called a Hebrew, one who crosses over. And there is, <clears throat> there is such a deep meaning to that beyond what we've known because Hebrew is not a race. Hebrew is a characteristic of God's people who begin to cross over. And that word is evar or abar. And it means to pass over, to pass through, to deliver, to change everything, to carry, to take away, to pass beyond, to breathe upon, to take pieces of the covenant and pass through them, to pass away, to impregnate, to make over, to dedicate, to go past or beyond. And so we are learning that we are crossover people. Is that right? That's where we're that's where we're moving to is that we are changing from who we were to who we're going to be in this time even where we are now. We are transitioning into the chosen people of God. Good morning, Candace. Hi Paul. How are you doing? Genesis 8 says that we, says that God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were on the ark and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water subsided. God made a wind, his breath, to cross over the earth and cause the waters to stop raising. That's the first mention of crossing over, and it was God who crossed over. His spirit, his wind, that's the same word, right? It's the same word, wind and spirit, same thing. God made his spirit or his wind to cross over the earth, and the water stopped rising. Now, we've been talking about... Now, we've been talking about um, Jacob... And how he crossed over. And I have several things I want to talk to you about. Uh, about Jacob. And how he crossed over. And think about how this would apply to you now. And what this means. Not just as a story we've heard before many times. But how does this apply to you now. In the situation that you're in right now. What does that mean to us? Right? How, how can we take these old stories and make them relevant how can the wind of god begin to impregnate me with an ability to cross over into new realms how do you move from one from one place or uh, to increase your metron of reach or how how do we move so in 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 genesis 
Yeah, please get your communion ready. In Genesis 28, Jacob had a dream. And as the sun was setting, Jacob stopped for the night. And, and he put a rock under his head, and he went to sleep, and he had a dream about a ladder and a stairway that went from the earth to the heaven. And on this ladder, he saw angels ascending and descending, ascending and descending. God was standing above the ladder and repeated the promise that we heard yesterday. We heard yesterday that um, he told Abraham that his offspring and blessings of his family would inherit the earth. And God repeated it again to Jacob. We have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? So he repeated this. Jacob saw a ladder with angels. And God said to Jacob, I'm with you. I will keep you. And I will bring you back to this land. And I will not leave you until I have done what I've promised. And can't we just grab a hold of that right now? God is not going to leave us in this time until he's done everything that he's promised to you. Every word, every prophetic word that you're waiting to receive, you, you will not lose those promises. God says he promises that the things that he has spoken to you will come to pass. Stir up the words that the Lord has told you before because they're coming to pass. And Jacob awoke and he believed that God was present in that place. And he took the stone that he'd had under his head and he poured oil all over it and he made a vow. This is covenant, right? If God will be with me and keep me, and give me bread. I will give him a tenth. Here we have. Here we have. Tithing before the law. Covenant. We have the covenant exchange. These promises that I'm expecting. In return. In return. I'm giving a tenth. In, in return. The, the name Bethel means the house of God. But in return to what is received, there's an exchange. Say, say just say exchange. That we know that these topics of money have been so misused and manipulated. But listen, there's an exchange. If you see angels climbing up and down the ladder and God speaking at the top of the ladder saying, everything I promised you will come to pass, there's an exchange. There's no other way to climb the ladder except for Jesus Christ. It says that uh, if you try to go in another way, you're a thief and a robber. Jesus told Nicodemus, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who has descended from heaven. That's Jesus, right? The only means by which we can ascend. The only way that we can keep this exchange going is having it two ways. There's a covenant. A covenant is always two ways. It's not just me receiving from God, me receiving from God, me, but there's an exchange there's an exchange. And so when Jesus met Nathaniel, he said, in you there's no guile. Now, interesting because in Jacob, he was his name was Liar Supplanter, right? Because he'd stolen his brother's birthright. But when Jesus saw Nathaniel, he said, in you there's no guile. And assuredly, you're going to see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending. There's, there's a similarity here in that God is promising us that we will be able to see this also. So Jacob had stayed for many years. He, was, he left his home and, and he saw the ladder on his way 
to Laban's house, his uncle's. And while he was there, he married uh, his four wives, Rachel and Leah and Bella and Zophah. And But he decided he wanted to go home now. So, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday. He said, let me go and cross over. That's the word Evar. Let me take for myself all your flock today and remove every speckled and spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb, every spotted and speckled goat, and they will be my wages. <laughs> Let me have the imperfect, the unwanted. Let me have what you don't want. I'll, I'll just take that and that will be my wage. And, and we know that he became extremely rich from that because he took the unwanted. And we have to know what our assignment is and who we're assigned to. And if we're assigned like I am, I, I have always asked God for David's band of the unlovely. I've always asked God for the ones that other people don't want. Let me have the imperfect. He said, that will be how I live. That will be what I devote my life to. So Jacob went on his way with his wives. He left, finally was able to leave Laban. And he took, he took um, all his wives with him. And angels met him. And, and Jacob saw two heavenly encampments of angels. And, and he described it as, this is God's army. And he named that place Mahanaim. Mahanaim literally means the double camps of two armies dancing. Isn't that cool? These angels were dancing because Jacob had begun to cross over and move out of the defilement of living with his uncle, and he began to cross over into uh, going back to where he was born, and he saw angels dancing because he was because he was crossing over into this new assignment. And he named that place Bethel or the house of God. Well, on his way home. He had to meet Esau, and that was his twin brother, and they had been, are you following me or are you with me? <laughs> so Jacob was going to meet Esau, and they had not spoken for 20 years because Jacob stole Esau's inheritance. And Esau left the land, and Jacob went off to his uncles, and they hadn't spoken for 20 years. But here comes Esau with 400 men. Jacob had just seen these angels, but he was terrified. Uh, Genesis says he was greatly afraid and distressed. So he sent messengers ahead of him to, to Esau uh, saying, Oh, that I might find grace in your sight. Because he was really afraid because he had, he had really done Esau wrong. So he sends his wives and his children across the river to keep them safe. And he spent the night alone in Peniel. And he wrestled until daybreak with an angel, right? And the angel touched his hip and caused him to limp. And Jacob grabbed a hold of that angel and said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And the angel said, what is your name? And he said, Jacob, which meant liar and supplanter. And he had actually taken on the nature of that name. And the angel said, no longer will your name be liar and supplanter. I'm going to give you a new name and that will be Israel for you have exercised mastery with the divine and you have prevailed. You have wrestled with God, and you have prevailed. And then the angel said again, what is your name? And he said, Jacob, because he still 
didn't get it. He didn't get that as we move forward, as we cross over into new realms, God gives us this new identity and he begins to call us into the new identity. And uh, we don't know for sure who this angel was. It, it could have been a theopony or it could have been a messenger of God, an angel. But I write a lot about it in my new book, The, the Mystery of Christ, Revealing the Mystery of Christ. But there's a, there's a, an exchange here. His name was changed to he who struggles with God or he who wrestles to win and won't let go. I won't let you go until you bless me. Now, this is a big crossover. He, he was so afraid of meeting his brother that he was wrestling and hanging on to this angel saying, I've got to have your support here. And, you know, the whole land of it here got named after him. And all of his descendants were Israelites. And the name Israel was named after him. But it was in this place of wrestling and not giving up. And so Genesis 32 says, So Jacob called the place Peniel. It is because I see the God face to face. And yet my life was spared. And the sun rose above him as he crossed over. Are you with me? Uh, I have had this experience with God. I've had face-to-face -face experience. I am in the presence. That word is presence of God. I am in the presence and my life is spared. And, the, and he crossed over. He named that place, Peniel, Presence. But it was a turning point for him. It was a turning point when Jacob realized that God had changed his name and he was able to go forward and meet his brother, his twin brother, that he had cheated and he had been fearful of for 20 years. So Jacob lifted up his eyes and he looked and, and, and behold, here comes Esau and these 400 men. So uh, he, it says that he crossed over before them. He had his wives and his children with him and, he, and in front of them, he began to cross over. Now they knew he was afraid of his brother, but he he took up everything he had, and he began to cross over. That means he took charge. He took the land as he walked. He impregnated his steps and his determination, and he crossed over in front of his family saying, Watch me as I win this. See, And, and he bowed in front of his brother seven times. After 20 years of fear, finally Jacob was able to cross over. And, and guess what happened? This is, and Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And they cried. So all along, Jacob had been fearful, but Esau had not held a grudge. See how, see how we can stay in a place of, of worry and defeat and dis, disappointment and fear. And there's no reason at all. Because it's all in our conception. It's all in what we think is happening. And Esau, it says, he lifted up his eyes and he saw all these women and children. And he said, who are these? And, and Jacob said, these are so that I can find grace in your sight. And Esau said, I have, I have plenty enough. Keep what you have to yourself. Wow. Wow, after all those years. And so Jacob said, if I found grace, when I looked into your face, it was like I saw the face of God and that you were pleased with me. 
See, Jacob became Israel so that he could move into a place where he could see who his brother really is. The ability to see in a correct way. Esau didn't press charges for his birthright. Jacob found grace. He saw the face of God upon his brother. Jacob crossed over Peniel, saw the face of God, and obtained a new identity. I have a new identity. I have eyes to see who I am. May you have eyes to see what God is calling you to right now in this hour. May you see that you are defined to be the express image of his person. No one is supposed to be like anyone else. You're not supposed to be like me. I'm not supposed to be like Marilyn Hickey. We're not supposed to speak or preach like somebody else. We're not supposed to look like anybody else. Have the same message as anybody else. Have the eyes to see your identity, who you are, because God will change us, change our character, change everything about us. He took a liar and a supplanter and made him the father of nations. That's grace, my friend. That's grace. That's grace beyond what we've experienced most of us in our lives. Here Jacob was able to cross over in front of his family that knew his weaknesses, that knew his fears. And he began to boldly go into this place of his fears, and he discovered there was nothing to be fearful about. His encounter with angels is just so amazing. To see angels dancing as we're moving forward. Do you know that heaven is rejoicing over you today and angels are dancing? The, the armies of God are dancing over you as you move forward. My God, my God, can we imagine? Can you imagine just in your mind's eye seeing that as you move forward, as your character changes, as you move into your identity of God, that angels dance and sing and rejoice over you and that there's a there's a, a a wind of god that sweeps into the creativity of what we're doing and what we're saying so then let's take this bread this is the bread of his body and, and, and i say today it's the ability to see beyond our circumstances to have promises of God that take us through and beyond our situation. Just like Jacob was promised before he started that God would bring to pass everything that he had promised, we have that same promise. We are one body that is made up of many. We are equal in the Lord. When we take of this bread, we know that everyone, every race, every man, woman, and child, every class, every class of people are one in the bread. Take this bread, Jesus said, because I am in koinonia with you. This is the bread which we break. Is it not koinonia, the communion of the body of Christ? Now say, thank you, Lord. I partake of your body. Say that with me. I partake of your body. And I am part of your grand plan. I am leaving my past identity. Say it with me right now. No matter where you've come already, just say, I'm leaving my past identity. I'm growing, I'm strengthening and being enlightened. Say, I am growing and strengthening and being enlightened. I'm fully entering into a new identity, a kingship, authority, power, and revelation. I am potent. 
I'm able to reproduce the likeness of Christ. Every revelation brings me endurance. Every cell, every internal organ, every function of my mind is made new. And I receive in Jesus' name. Receive. Believe that you receive. Believe that there's an exchange that you enter into. Exchange, exchange. Come into the exchange here with the Lord and believe that your identity is changing. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Apostle Lynette. You said you stepped away to sow into this word. Thank God that you heard what was being said. Next, take the cup into your hand. This cup affirms our union with Christ as partners. That we are united. Not only are we crucified with Christ, but we have his identity. We have his priesthood. We are joined to him. Now say, because Zoe life is in your shed blood, I have assurance. I have forgiveness. I have abundance. Saying that with me, I have Zoe life flowing through my body. I have kingdom provision. I stand boldly in my new identity. Say that. I stand boldly in my new identity. I stand in the new covenant reality. I'm walking in the new covenant. The old covenant has passed away. I am, my identity is in the new. I let the old drop at my feet. Even the things that I preached yesterday, I'm letting it drop at my feet because my identity is changing. I celebrate my new inheritance that I receive right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the people that are with me today. God, that you bless every single person here. Lord, with understanding. Lord, that they can see the angels are dancing. That they can see the ladder. You are the ladder upon which we arise into the spiritual realm. You are the ladder upon which the angels descend and ascend. God, you change us. You change our, our identity. You change us into that which will establish nations that will change times and seasons in jesus name god i thank you that we believe and receive i want to thank each one of you for for being here today i just thank you so much for, that you hear the word of the lord and it changes you Nothing else can change us but the Holy Spirit speaking through his word. That we are crossing over and finding the love of God. We're crossing over and finding that he loves us anyway. That he's created us just like we are for a purpose. Just like we are. God, I thank you. And I want to thank you guys too. Please share this video. And uh, message me and tell me what you're hearing. Message me and tell me, tell me how your identity is changing. Yes, we're finding the love of God. Yes, yes, we are. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We just. You know, I remember I told you the other day, the Lord said communion means to commune with me. And we just commune with you, Lord. 
we just spend a moment just establishing our hearts and thanking you, God, for this time. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we can commune with you. Thank you that you give us hope. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I love you guys. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.